Julius Malema bought a stand in Polokwane for 200,000 rand, not through tenders, not through shady deals. He took out a bond, money he earned legally, and invested it in real estate. Two years later, that same land sold for 640,000 rand. That's a profit of 440,000 rand, a 220% return. This isn't luck, comrades. This isn't corruption. This is business intelligence. Malema saw an opportunity, took a calculated risk, and walked away with a massive gain. And this is just one of many deals he's done. The media won't tell you this because they're too busy feeding you lies about scandals that never stick. Ask yourself, how many leaders can you name who understand how to grow wealth like this? How many of them actually have the skills Malema demonstrated here? For someone who was earning 50,000 rand a month at that time, flipping property like this shows vision, not corruption. Now, Julius, the black economic empowerment and affirmative action, you have attacked that very much, yet some of the assets that were sold that belonged to you were amassed as a result of policies that favored the empowerment of black people. It's not true. I'm not a beneficiary of BE. Let me tell you one, the Polokwan house I had, when I became the Youth League Secretary, mm. I went to take a bond in Nedbank and then went to buy a stand at Stan at Sterk Park yeah. for 200,000. And then in the next two years, I sold that stand for 640,000. And then I took 400,000, went to deposit the house in a, a Flora Park and got a bond on that house from a net bank and mm -hmm. later was transferred into a bond uh, at APSA. There's no BEE there. The house in uh, Santen, which they took, was the house that was bought by comrades for me when I became the president of the ANC Youth League. Yeah, Something that is not, is not, is not a, a new. Uh. Did you hear that? No tenders, no shortcuts. This is a man who knew how to play the game. And here's where it gets even more interesting. Malema didn't stop there. He reinvested the profits, upgrading his portfolio strategically. What's the lesson here for us as Africans? Wealth is built, comrades. It's not handed out. Malema didn't sit back waiting for free money. He worked for it. But wait, before you jump to conclusions or start shouting VBS in the comments, let's lay the facts bare. If Malema is guilty, why hasn't he been arrested? Why hasn't the ANC, the DA, or even President Ramaphosa, who are his biggest enemies, taken him down? Because they've tried. Oh, they've tried. But the truth is much deeper. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the Santon Mansion. Critics love to point at this house as proof of corruption, saying it's impossible for a youth league leader to afford a 3.6 million rand property. But Malema has been transparent. He didn't buy this house alone. It was funded by ANC comrades who wanted to support the president of the Youth League, a tradition that dates back to Nelson Mandela's time. Malema even offered the house to the ANC. He said, if anything happens to me, this house should be donated to the movement. Compare that to other politicians who hide their wealth, who cover up their funders, who deny their connections. Malema stands by his truth, unashamed, unapologetic. Secondly, when we bought that house, they were not happy with it that we are ministers and premiers here. We can't be meeting each other on corridors. That's what led to the demolishing of that house so we can build a proper house with uh, in suits uh, because they said they don't want to see each other on the road. I said even before, I said even before my expulsion from the ANC that if I die, this house must be donated to the ANC before Mandela's will because I knew that was not my house. It was a house built by comrades it because it was their base. Okay, now Julius, are you sure that, that those assets were not bought, um, well, through comrades, by resources that were, uh, you know, amassed through black economic empowerment? They were politicians. I don't know if they are BEE. <laughs> they, that house was BEE, Sagumat Kozoma, Cyril Ramaphosa, Petrus Mutsi, but they are very Cell few. is also a BEE. It's not a BEE. If that is a BEE, then it's a weak BEE. Uh, it's still imaging. Ali is a BEE. Ah, Hashem. We shall is even worse. I mean, there is nothing BEE about Ali. But uh, those are not the people who, who bought that house. Mm. Uh, those were my friends. The leadership of the ANC, yeah. uh, particularly from Limpopo, converted their ha my house into their base when they were visiting okay. Johannesburg. I said, this house, if anything happens to me, it must be donated to the ANC. 
it must be used as a guest house, particularly for ANC comrades who come from Polokwan. And while Malema is transparent about his funders, his houses, and his income, what about the DA? What about the ANC? Where are their disclosures? Why are they hiding their funders? Why are they ashamed? Malema stands firm and says, yes, we're funded by individuals who believe in our cause. Compare that to parties who pretend their money falls from the sky. This is why the EFF remains untouchable. They are transparent, fearless, and unbothered by the hate. So, comrades, what's the real story here? It's not about VBS. It's not about mansions or tenders. It's about a man who built himself from the ground up using strategy, intelligence, and boldness. It's about a leader who inspires us to think bigger, to fight harder, and to dream of a South Africa that belongs to all who live in it. Malema is not perfect. No leader is. But he's unafraid to challenge the status quo, to speak truth to power, and to show us that success is earned, not handed out. The next time someone says, Malema is corrupt, ask them to bring proof. Ask them to face the truth. South Africa, the lesson here is clear. Greatness isn't given. It's worked for. Malema is living proof of that. Whether you support him or not, his story is a reminder that we can build, we can grow, and we can fight for what we believe in. So what do you think, comrades? Is this the leader South Africa needs, or is he misunderstood? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, this is just the beginning of the conversation. Stay woke, stay informed, and stay fighting. Um, we don't agree with a fake and expired food. That's the bottom line. And we, as the EFF, from time to time at the branch level, we go visit the shops to check the expiry dates and all of that. My problem is that we now associate a fake a food and expired food exclusively to those ones who are found in the villages and in the township, as if those are the people who can sell such things. And SPA, I said this publicly many times, they've never challenged me. SPA sells expired food. But because it's white-owned, no one speaks about that. It's like, no, expired food is associated with these ones and all of that. South Africa has got a right to protect its own economy, including small businesses and all of that. We must not avail our own properties to these people and then complain after that these people have come to open spaza shops because none of these people has forced anyone actually in front of my grandmother's house one of them is there he was in a shop that we grew up that shop was there then i don't know what happened they fought then he went next door they, if you look at the design of their shops are the same and the color they're colorful and and people say oh, these people come here and do this but my question is, you guys give them the space to do what they are doing. Mm. And then you come back to complain. Our foreign policy, especially with the African continent, is that this continent is one. It has always been one. And you can't say, I don't like apartheid, I don't like colonialism, but I support borders. The borders were imposed on us by the colonialists during the scramble for Africa. And therefore... In undoing the work of colonialism, the borders have to be done away with.